Next topic that we want to talk about, Dak Prescott has been injured. Andy Dalton is now coming in for the remainder of the 11 games for the Dallas Cowboys and leading them for the duration of the 2020 NFL season. So first, before we get into Andy Dalton, I think that we all can agree that when we saw Dak Prescott get injured, our jaws dropped, our breath left our lungs, we felt for Dak Prescott. Even if you hate the Dallas Cowboys for some reason, I don't know, they just seem to be a team that a lot of people like to hate. Even if you hate the Dallas Cowboys, a lot of people felt it inside for Dak Prescott and that injury. Because when you saw the injury and how gruesome it was and how horrendous it was, as soon as you saw the injury, you were like, oh my gosh, that guy's season, it's over. It's over. It's kind of similar to uh, Tyler Eifert's Eifert's injury in, in 2018, I believe it was, against the Atlanta Falcons when he just destroyed his ankle. It was the same exact injury, and he had to miss their entire uh, season at that point. So Dak Prescott is in the same boat. Never missed a game since his rookie season, since he took over for Tony Romo, since Tony Romo got hurt. He took over in 2016 and led the way for uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Never missed a season, and he's finally going to be missing uh, his first game. The question is, Andy Dalton coming in for Dak Prescott, are the Cowboys going to be the same, and are they going to uh, uh, continue to be contenders in the NFC East and not skip a beat with Andy Dalton at quarterback? First, we have to talk about Dalton when he came in against the New York Giants. How'd he fare? Nine out of 11 passes completed. 81% of his passes were completed. 1,100 or 111 yards uh, passing yards, and that clutch, super clutch completion to Michael Gallup along the sideline to set up Greg the Leg and that game-winning field goal against the New York Giants. So Dalton did fairly well. Only two incompletions in that game against the New York Giants. I personally believe that Dalton is capable of playing in the NFL and capable of being a starting quarterback in the NFL. He was not the problem and not the issue in Cincinnati. Due to circumstance, due to them having the number one overall pick, due to them being 2-14, and 14, they decided to move on from Andy Dalton, save some money, and just draft the quarterback of the future in Joe Burrow. I do believe that Dalton is going to do well for the Cowboys. However, I don't believe that the Cowboys are going to win the NFC East. And here's why. Dalton, as good as he is, is still a downgrade from Dak Prescott. If you were looking at Dak Prescott's stats, he was on pace to throw for 6,400, I believe it was 6,400 or just over 6,000 passing yards for the whole 2020 season. That would have been an NFL record at that point. Why was he on pace? One, he's a good quarterback, so he can keep his own when his team is down. He's good at passing the ball and completing the ball, and he can lead his team to a victory. Number two, that defense is so bad that the Cowboys were down and they had no choice but to pass the ball. Dak Prescott was capable of keeping the Cowboys in the game. Towards the end, they weren't able to win. That's a different story, but he was capable of leaving or leading the Dallas Cowboys in position to win the game and keeping up with the amount of points that the other offense was scoring on their terrible, terrible defense for the Dallas Cowboys. Dalton, I don't believe he's going to be in that same breath. I don't believe he's going to be in that same conversation and capable of leading the Cowboys and throwing for 400 yards every single game because that defense, let's be honest, it is bad. It really is. And they might improve. That defensive line is pretty good. That front seven is good once they get Leighton Van Der Esch back from an injury. But I don't believe that Dalton is capable of keeping up with the amount of points that the opposing team is going to score on them and keeping up and helping them win uh, so many games for the Dallas Cowboys. They're already in a tough spot right now. Only won two games so far this season. I just don't see it with Dalton being that Dak Prescott and passing for 400 yards every single game. Instead, a guy or a team that I feel like could win the NFC East, the Philadelphia Eagles. It makes a lot of sense. Carson Wentz is a good quarterback that's just lacking uh, 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 injured players and receivers, and they're getting Alshon Jeffrey back and Deshaun Jackson back and hopefully Dallas Goddard later down the road. They're getting all these pieces back, and then we'll see for sure if Carson Wentz has lost a step or not. But as of right now, with them being uh, in a position to be contenders in the NFC East and with the Eagles defense being much better, much better than the Dallas Cowboys, I think that the Philadelphia Eagles are still the favorites to win the NFC East. I know that's not saying much because the Giants and the Redskins are not that good. The Cowboys are under 500, and the Eagles are just... 
not that good at uh, at football right now, but I feel like that the Eagles have a better shot of winning the NFC East more so now that Andy Dalton is the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And that's not attacking the talent of Andy Dalton. Unlike some people, if you want to talk about attacking the talent, Patrick Peterson, the cornerback uh, for the Arizona Cardinals, they face on Monday Night Football. He stated, ooh, this is a little bit of a shade. Patrick Peterson on Andy Dalton, he said, and I quote, definitely got to stop the run and force. Not saying he can't do it, but we have to force Andy Dalton to beat us. Ooh. We feel if you take the ball out of Ezekiel Elliott's hands, there's more opportunities for bad things to happen if the ball is in the air. Bro, that's shade. That's shade. If I ever heard it, that's shade. Okay, and we all know about Andy Dalton's history of handling comments. Okay, we talk about J.J. Watt in 2015. We talk about his Red Rider BB gun comments and how Andy Dalton got upset in a pe- in a press conference, post-game press conference, about J.J. Watt just having some friendly smack talk. Talking about how he's not the Red Rifle and he's the Red Rider BB gun after defeating them. Oh, same thing with Patrick Peterson. How is Andy Dalton going to handle those comments? Maybe he's just going to let it slide. Maybe he learned his lesson from J.J. Watt, but... Already, that shows that most teams aren't really that concerned about Andy Dalton. I think, and I'm a sucker for proving people wrong. I love to see players go out there and prove people wrong. Like when Josh Allen went out there and proved Jalen Ramsey wrong. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. That actually just warmed me in my heart. I love that. It's just sweet, sweet revenge. It's amazing. And hopefully Andy Dalton can do the same thing. Can show that he's capable of being a good quarterback in the NFL. But I just don't see them winning the NFC East. I feel like the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be those ones to win that division. 